I must admit, this project will do a world of good for the people of Chesterfield. That's the whole issue, isn't it? Yes, that's why I went to the meeting. But uh, I'm not sure whether I agree with Preston Carpenter that I'm the one to head this relocation effort. Well, you're the obvious and probably the most logical one for the job. And Dave, no matter how hard you will try not to admit it, I know that you're very excited by this whole idea. <laughs> you're right. Can you imagine how this plan will upgrade Chesterfield? I mean, the jobs, the new businesses it will attract? What's that old saying um, about looking a gift horse in the mouth? Mm-hmm. The only problem is that if I go along with this, I'll be allying myself with Lee Carruthers. And that's a sacrifice I'm not sure I'm willing to make. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, well, sh <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. I can't tell you what a big help you've been. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks much. Okay, bye. <sighs> 58 seconds left in the game. We're up by five. Guess who's got the ball? No more overtime either, lady. Got you right where I want you. I, I thought okay. basketball season was over. Well, uh, it is, but uh, it's another day, and on, on, on this day, we're going to have another season. It's open for something else. Like what? Like open season on Domi. And there won't be any overtimes? Absolutely no overtime. Stacy, I've done a little more footwork, and I'm telling you, I'm right on the verge of busting this Domi wide open. <laughs> You think it's as hot in North Carolina as it is here? Where Lori's staying, it probably isn't. There's usually a nice ocean breeze at the Outer Banks. Everything okay? Yeah, she called me last night. They arrived safely. The weather's fine. Marianne's doing great. So, how did you fulfill your half of the separate vacation last night? Don't make it sound so dramatic. I'm not suffering from a case of the seven-year itch. Maybe, but it seems to me like you've got some of the symptoms, old buddy. What do you mean? I thought I'd warned you about the complicated snares of older women. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, that. You know, rather tallish, brunette, and bewitching. Oh, yeah. It's not often that I care enough about somebody to warn them about getting burned. Now, you wait a minute. Now, you wait a minute. Vanessa is the last thing you need. Oh, come on, Brian. If you're talking about last night, nothing went on. I mean, she dropped by my office. I didn't even invite her. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Tell her she couldn't come to my office? That might not have been a bad idea. Why, because you gave her a bad character reference? Now, come on, if she is such a werewolf, why did you bring her to the charity ball? Double standard. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean between it's men... It's between that... married men. And men that aren't married at present, like me. Oh, I see. It's okay for you to see her, but not for me. Look, Ben. You and Lori are important to me. Besides, I've been around more than you have. I've dealt with women like Vanessa before. It takes a special knack to keep them from taking advantage of you. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to help keep you out of trouble, that's all. At this time of your life, Ben, somebody like Vanessa is the last thing you need. Do you realize how patronizing you sound? And before you get yourself in any deeper, let me just tell you one thing. Last night couldn't have been any more proper. We talked. Talked? Yeah, we talked. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for you playboys who've been around, uh, that may be a little difficult to understand. But, Brian, we just talked. About what? Frankly, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. 
You know, I find it a little amusing uh, that you think there was something going on last night. I mean, a man of your experience should be able to read his signs better than that. Read the signs. Where are you off to? I've got a luncheon date. Hmm. Anybody I know? Yes. Come on, Ben, you're not serious. Oh, yes, I am. But don't worry, I'm gonna call Lori tonight and tell her all about it. You see, Brian, she trusts me a little more than you do. Whose idea was it? Here's Vanessa's. We didn't get to finish uh, talking about certain things last night, so uh, she told me if I had the time, I should swing by her office this afternoon for a casual lunch. Uh, I'm not sure the time, but I think it was around uh, one o'clock. At her office? Yes. And it was her suggestion? Don't worry, Brian. I'm not worried. Lori's not worried. Just relax. We married types may not have been around as much as you've been around. But I think we're a little more secure in our relationship with the opposite sex. If you ask me, it's stretching a point to even suggest that you're Heading up the relocation committee would put you in the same political class with Lee Carruthers. Well, I don't know if everybody else would feel that way. Besides, what do you think are his chances of getting reelected? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. But Hugh Wainwright is way far ahead in the preliminaries without any advertising or campaigning so far. Yes, but unfortunately, you can never count somebody like Lee Carruthers out. Yes, it's, it seems that dishonest politicians have a way of landing on both feet, no matter how bad their past politics. Sometimes I think the whole lot of them are nothing but a bunch of petty, self-serving... Hey, 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 now where did this come from? Well, the meeting. I mean, you, should have, you should have heard them. I mean, once the relocation plan was accepted as, as potentially good, Mary Kincaid and Lee Carruthers started squabbling about whose press people would uh, make the announcement. They don't care about the people of, of Chesterfield. All they're doing is serving their own self-interests. But you are interested in helping, aren't you? You know I am. And that's all you have to think about. Not Carruthers or Kincaid or Preston Carpenter. Just simply, is this what you want to be doing? <laughs> I'm glad I'm marrying you. You know that? And I'm glad that you haven't become cynical. Just because you've seen the worst side of a couple of politicians. They're not all the same. Oh, I know that. Hugh Wainwright, for one. I mean, I've heard that he's a man of integrity. Now, people have had time to see Lee Carruthers for who he really is. They're not going to vote him back into office in November. Well, I hope you're right. Hey, you know something? What? I think I know a way to solve this dilemma without letting Lee Carruthers take all the credit. How? Well, I can make sure that all their promises are fulfilled and all the details are, are finished before I accept the, the chairmanship of the committee. Of course. I know it'll take a lot of time and uh, probably be a lot of aggravation, but it's really the only way to go. I couldn't agree more, but where do you start? Well, by getting all the promises that uh, they were making, all the good things they were going to do for the people of Chesterfield into writing, and then take them to the newspapers. I mean, that's the least we can do once we start moving people out of their homes, even if it is in their own best interests. I think that's a great idea. And speaking of interests, I gotta scram, because I've got a few of my own top interests to keep alive. I've got a meeting with Lester Lewis and a member of the board to resolve this whole matter of making a cutback in the Rape Crisis Center. Oh, you're having political problems too, huh? Yeah, budgetary too. <laughs> well, maybe we should change professions, huh? Run for political office. No, 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 no. I want to be first lady. I don't want to hold an office. Besides, I want to be the power behind the throne. Oh. <laughs> oh, and now would the king please put the meatloaf in the refrigerator for me? <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Now you think about it, Stacy. Those three ladies who died at the Bedford in the past couple of years, none of them ever left any wills. And that's including Mrs. Gilbert. So what? A lot of people never get around to having a will drawn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Stacy, listen. None of them had any local relatives who might who might stay on the authorities to search out those documents. You see what I'm saying? Well, again, that could be a coincidence. Yeah, sure, it could. But all three of them were very rich, very eccentric. And remember, rich people tend to be more careful about such details than you and I. 
Sure, but like you said, they were all so eccentric. That means just about anything could oh, be true. Stacy, great. Yes, anything could be true. But you have to understand, I was on this phone for a couple of hours talking to several relatives of those people. And I want you to know something. There was a pattern. Now listen to this. Get, get a chair. Sit down. Sit down. Listen at this. Now, all were involved with the occult, right? This is what one, one woman said. Never could figure out what my sister wanted with all of those strange people when she had such a wonderful husband and family. Weird people like... Domi. You got it. That's right. And there's more. Now, <clears throat> and then another lady says, a friend, of two, a friend of two of the ladies suggested that they were both into the psychic cult. One was convinced that she had great, a great deal of ESP, and she always wanted to find someone that she could share her interest with, right? And then a second, this is the son, mm -hmm. he said that his mother was so into mind control that he left town. Now, isn't that something? I mean, the guy got disinherited, but he said it was okay because got to the point he didn't want his children to spend any time with Grandma because he was afraid of the influence that she might have on them. No wonder you said you found an open season on Domi. Well, at least it looks that way so far. Now, if I could just find some kind of way to show that the ladies, all this money that these ladies had, ended up in Domi mm -hmm. without the use of a will. Well, how are you going to do that, Sherlock? Well, Stacy, good old Vanessa uh -huh. has a public affairs seminar until 2.30. That should give me time to get into her place, get the information I need, and get out before she gets back. Jane, isn't that just a little bit illegal? A little bit illegal. That's almost as illegal as swindling rich matrons out of their money. Well, you tell back. the boss I'll be back in a couple of hours. Hey, right, you fine. tell him yourself. Jane, yeah. uh, can I see you uh, a second? Walt, well, well, I can't talk right now. Something's come up, and I really got to go. I can't wait. Talk to Stacy. She'll tell you. Okay? What are you talking about? What can't wait? Something you'd rather hear about after the fact. Mr. McGovern, you said that today you were going to make up your mind about who would be the main reporter for the congressional campaign. I assume you've made a decision. And I assume that you've given me equal consideration for that job. you this meeting might not be entirely matter of fact nurse davidson's had her mind set on the rape crisis center for some time now yes i'm sure and she's not the kind of a person who gives up easily you know we've had our differences over the years but i've gained a lot of respect for her she's not a person who wastes time on trivialities and when she gets behind a project ah, like but this, you wouldn't have it any other way ah, precisely which is why I think perhaps you'd better let me do most of the talking here. Things might get a little delicate. Yes, but let's get on with it. I mean, after all, you're the administrator and I'm on the board. Now, your nurse Davidson may very well be another Florence Nightingale, but she must understand that she has little to say as to where hospital funds are eventually allocated. Of course. It, uh, you know, Hugh, it would have been a lot easier if you'd made your position clear earlier. Now, Davidson's one of our key people, and I wouldn't have wanted to do anything that would have misled. Oh, well, come in, Terry. I'm sorry I'm late, Lester. <clears throat> Terry Davidson, Hugh Wainwright. My pleasure. Thank you. You won't believe this, but we were just talking about you over lunch today, or rather, your candidacy. Lester, why didn't you tell me he was the board member we were going to meet with? I trust most of your conversation was positive. Oh, very much so. It certainly is good to meet a congressman who has the needs of the people at heart. Yes. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Davidson. I hope that your endorsement of my candidacy won't change when you hear why I don't agree with you in support for the Rape Crisis Center.
it to you right from the hip, Stacy. I can't help but feel that you're just a little too prejudiced against Lee Carruthers to be objective about the assignment. That's ridiculous. I'm a professional. Yeah, a professional whose mother happened to have been married to Lee Carruthers and was killed by his campaign manager. Well, why not throw in the fact that I was tried for the murder, too? I mean, come on, that's in the past. I only wish that those sort of things could stay in the past, but objectivity is a very tricky thing, Stacy. Believe me, I know. Well, sure it can be, but at least give me a chance before you look, go into... Look, the point is... The point is, Stacy, you may feel that you're being objective, but prejudices have a way of, of sneaking in and betraying you. You know that old cliche about the, you can't see the forest for the trees? That can become a very real thing. Thanks for your confidence. If I'd known you'd felt this way, I would have stayed in therapy and not come back to work. Stacy, take it easy. S sit down a second. Let's, let's be honest about this, shall we? It would be inhuman of you not to dislike Lee Carruthers. Look, he, he, was, uh, he was elected on a sympathy vote. And it didn't take him very long to prove just how incompetent he was. I mean, everybody dislikes him. Well, that's my point. Huh? Everybody dislikes Carruthers. Everyone here knows him for what he is. Who on your staff could support him? Could anyone be unbiased? Probably not. So, any reporter that you put on the job is going to have a bone to pick. Which makes my case even stronger. At least I'll be more careful than anyone else, because I know you'll be watching me every word of the way. Hmm. Look, I know you'd rather have McGinnis or Jean on the job, and it's not that they haven't earned it. But McGinnis is already swamped, and Jean is up to his ears in this Domi thing. If you took Jean off the Domi thing now, he'd pout for a month. And you know Jean is no good at all when he's pouting. <laughs> you're probably right about that. <laughs> so, your choice is pretty obvious to me. After those two, you don't have anyone who'd be a natural for the job. Admit it. So what you're saying is that you have won the job by default? Something like that. But I must say that this is one time when I don't mind being second choice. Well, I gotta hand it to you. Stacy, you sure got spunk. Okay, the job is yours, but I'm warning you, I am gonna be behind you on that campaign word by word. Great. You won't regret this decision, Mr. McGovern. It's my opinion that the people of this city need a pavilion dedicated to sports medicine more than a rape crisis center. Sports medicine? I, I don't understand. Well, that's, that's why we asked you to meet with us this afternoon, Terry. You see, uh, you has an idea that... What Lester is trying to tell you is that the board of directors of Kingsley Hospital has voted that its next major project will be to institute a center for sports medicine. And I'm happy to say that I am a person who has helped to guarantee some of the funding for this project so that we'll be adding a special wing to the hospital to house this facility. Do you have any idea of the staggering rate of rape victims found in a community our size? Well, Terry, maybe you'd better... Lester, you know the statistics. You know the need. Terry, there are other agencies in Kingsley to deal with these things. Then why, Lester, did you give us the green light months ago? You saw all the reports. I am not charged with the administration of funds. That's a function of the board of directors. I see now what you were talking about before, Lester. I beg your pardon? Before you came into the room, Mrs. Davidson, Lester here was telling me what a devoted person you are, that you're always looking out for the welfare of others, the perfect person to serve Kingsley General as Director of Nursing. I'm not interested in being patronized, Mr. Wainwright. Terry! That wasn't my intention at all. It's people like you that make Kingsley Hospital great. Unfortunately, if we folks on the Board of Directors had more funding, we could do both projects, but we don't, do we? No, we don't. I'm glad you see our dilemma. I'm sorry, Lester, I have to go. No, oh, yes, of course, you. I had a business appointment, but I guess I should have waited outside in the hallway. Yeah. 
probably so. That probably would have been good. All right, G. What are you doing here? Wednesday on Another Life, Tina is frightened and confused. Tina, if something's upsetting you, it's going to worry me. It is? Yes. What's the matter? And Dan has an unexpected meeting with Preston. What are you doing in my house? Well, I think I just told you, Preston, I want to see court. And while you're here, there are a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Watch Another Life.